going on YouTube Clover Bells here back with another series 11 team building video and today we're looking at Eveltal so this will be the fifth and final uh, team building video that we're going to release so uh, this is going to be for and again another rental code for the month of January we've already did Zacian Dragonite we did Kurem White we did Ho-Oh uh, we did our greedy Calyrex Shadow so if you haven't checked out those videos check them out uh, because those four are also going to be rental codes that we're going to release for the month of January but again this will be the final one uh, uh, so I've been asked to do Eveltal quite a bit uh, and I, I've been telling people wait have some patience I will get to Eveltal uh, when I get the chance and here is that chance all right so finally uh, we're showcasing how we like to do Eveltal on this channel um, but uh, just so that you know there previously there was a, a really really good Eveltal team made from Joe UX9 uh, e won the victory road challenge with it I, and i believe that that uh, went something like this where he had uh the torkoal venusaur engine with grimmsnarl and incineroar the triple dark team uh and he, he also had a landers i believe in that in that regard uh so now what we're gonna do is instead of using that kind of core we're gonna go with a, a little bit of a a different way of showing eveltal and that's gonna be uh with uh, a metagross uh so let's just go ahead and add that here um just as soon as my browser stops acting up here uh then i can finally add it okay there we go uh i had to pause the video for a second and figure out what the heck was wrong with my browser but yes uh we are going with metagross here so the reason why is you know a, a good steel type with the veltel always does well because uh you know with the veltel being weak to fairy type moves, uh, something like a Moonblast from either a Xerneas or a Tapu Fini or Dazzling Gleam from something else. Uh, Metagross does really well because you're a Steel type and you can take fairy hits very, very well. In fact, they don't do anything to you. So, uh, Evelto Metagross is what we're looking at here. And then now with the remaining four slots, we're just going to use them to check the rest of the meta and, you know, just balance out the rest of the team. But Eveltel Metagross is the core of this particular squad that we're going to be looking at. So from here, uh, after Eveltel Metagross, so we're, we're going to be obviously running a weakness policy on this, right? So we want to proc it uh, with another Mon on the team. And, you know, we've done Entei in the past um, many, many times. And Entei does very well because it's a fire type. You know that does well again into both Calyrexes as well as Zacian. Uh, but we're gonna do a, something a little bit different this time. We're gonna go with a faster type of bulldoze and something that has been, I think, forgotten in this format. Um, and that's gonna be Spectre here. So let's just go ahead and add that GIF um, with uh, Spectre over here. Where is that? Yeah, there it is. So Spectre, you know, unlike Entei, has. Uh, well, like Entei, cannot be faked out, but not because of inner focus, but because it's a ghost type. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, it's faster. So, you know, base 130 speed is faster than Entei's base 100 speed. So you don't lose uh, speed ties to stuff like Regigigas or Charizard or Zapdos. Uh, you, you will win in that regard. So I think Spectre is very, very nice. And, you know, you've seen like Sogaleo Spectre before. So um, Spectre and Metagross also works very, very well. Uh, and then from here, uh, we'll just go for a little bit more speed control and then have another max airstream user. But, you know, another dark type that does really well with Eveltal is uh, Incineroar. Uh, so Incin, you know, just gives the team fake out pressure, gives the team intimidate. Uh, and it's another dark type that can take advantage of Eveltal's dark aura. So, you know, it just fits overall, you know, might as well just put in Incin. So let's just go ahead and reveal that GIF. Okay, and then from here, uh, now we're, we're looking at stuff like, you know, Kyogre uh, and Sun team matchups here. So I think, you know, Landris has to come uh, just so that, you know, you get a second Intimidator on the team. You get a flying type pivot on the team, which Incineroar and Metagross very much appreciate, right? It's because, you know, both of those don't want to take a Max Quake. So if you can pivot them out for your Landris, uh, then you can just punish the opponent that, that tries to go for a Max Quake. And that's also why you have Eveltal on the team as well. So let's just go ahead and reveal that one. And from here, uh, we kind of need a little bit more for Kyogre. So I think, you know, something like a Rillaboom or a Regilecki would fit just fine. Uh, we're going to go with the Lecky because uh, Regilecki and Landris is, is very punishing because you can go for speed control with Electro Web here. And then Landris uh, benefits off of that speed drop and then can go for Max Airstream of its own. 
All right, so let's just go ahead and reveal that final GIF over here. So yeah, we've got our six. Uh, this is how we're gonna run it. Eveltal Metagross with Spectre, Instant, Landris, and Regilecki in the back end. So now let's just go ahead and hash out the rest of the moves, the EVs, and the items. All right, so with Eveltal here, uh, again, there's a lot, there's a few items that can do well on Eveltal. You know, if this was a Comfey team, then obviously you would run a weakness policy, but that is not the case here. So on non-Comfey Eveltal teams, by the way, I hate Comfey with Eveltal. I think that's, I don't think it's good. <laughs> I think uh, Comfey plus something else is is a little bit better. Uh, Eveltal is a little bit of a different restricted, right? You know, in the sense that you, your job is not really to deal damage. Your job is to you're, you're more of a bulkier supportive restricted. You know, it, considering its move sets and some of its utility, your job is to stay on the field and you know absorb HP and deal damage, a little bit of damage right back, but. Your job is to have longevity on the field while dealing damage, right? Not not to sweep, all right? So, you know, I, I feel like, you know, Eveltal Comfey teams, they're, they're, it's not my cup of tea. I think, you know, Life Orb is okay, um, but I think the best item, without a doubt, is the Assault Vest. Go ahead and at me in the comment if you think uh, there's a better item for Eveltal than the Assault Vest. But to me, this is how you're supposed to play this thing, right? You, you, you're supposed to play it bulky, uh, stay on the field longer, and deal damage while regaining your health over time. Okay, so typical moveset that we're going to go with Eveltal here. Of course, the Oblivion Ring, that's its signature move. This is what also gives it max airstream. All right, then from here, we want Foul Play. We want Snarl and we want Sucker Punch, right? Because again, Calyrex Shadow doesn't want to deal with Eveltal at all. And just any of these dark moves uh, will just completely wipe it off the field. Foul plays really good against, you know, stuff like Zacian or things that want to activate their weakness policy. Uh, so in that regard, Foul Play is really, really nice. Snarl is good, especially against, you know, the Kyogre matchup or any other special attacker in general. Just, you know, deal good damage benefit off a of dark aura and then you know make things minus one and then you know just regenerate over time with oblivion wing here and there any belt will win the game uh, in the in the long run right and then sucker punch priority you know this is just for things that are faster and you know it does pretty good damage because again it's another thing that benefits off of dark aura so yeah this is this is how i think you should be, be using the evelto but let's go ahead and round out the rest of the team before we start doing the evs so metagross I did mention we're going to use the weakness policy on it uh, and we're going to have a typical move set here. We're going to have the rock move on the Landris. So with Metagross, we're going to have Ice Punch instead. Uh, so this way we get Max Hailstorm. But anyway, Metagross here, Iron Head uh, and then Stomping Tantrum. So Max Steel Spike, Max Quake. You know, this is what makes Metagross so good in the Dynamax format again. Uh, just being able to boost your defenses by... Uh, going for these stat increases with steel spikes and 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 um you know max quakes and then you're getting the weakness policy damage buff so you you just become an unkillable beast eventually and you could sweep teams all right and then protect in the final one all right now spectre so the the interesting thing with spectre is um uh, i decided on a move set but then after testing it a little bit more i changed one move and you'll find that out at the end of the video but let me show you what i originally had um this is of course this is going to be focused sash this doesn't change uh i've seen safety goggles on this uh just so that you have a little bit more security in the sun matchup uh but we're gonna put that on incinerar anyway but uh focus sash is good this way we can at least uh, guarantee one kind of move uh, like a bulldoze <clears throat> so shadow ball this is our stab move uh, bulldoze like we said uh, to get speed control and also proc the weakness policy on the metagross uh, will-o-wisp you know just you know stuff for stuff like zation and a strong physical attacker like groudon uh, and will-o-wisp comes in handy and then uh, this is the move i changed in the end but uh, i stuck with taunt uh, just to deny trick room or deny tailwind uh, you know, and you have base 130 speed, so a fast taunt is always pretty good. Um, but I did eventually change this move. But if you like taunt, um, you should definitely keep it. All right, Ensign. So this is uh, our safety goggles. This is going to help uh, against the the sun matchup and also Amoongus in general. Uh, just being having at least one sleep immune mon on the team is always very very good. Um, but very standard move set here: flare blitz, uh, fake out, you know, uh, parting shot. 
and the last one throat chop so throat chop is really good with the belt all because again you're benefiting off a of dark aura so now uh your throat chop does uh, a lot of damage um you'd be surprised how hard this thing hits uh go ahead and try it if you don't believe me uh but then from here uh landris so this is we're gonna go violent with the landris and the lecky here so the lecky is gonna have the magnet all right and the landris is gonna have the life orb here so you know you can go lumberry here just to give you a little bit more security for the sun matchup but you know this is where you're going with something like swords dance but for me i like the life orb item and in the last slot uh, i like protect so a little bit more of a harder hitting landris that doesn't rely on setup but anyway, uh, so Earthquake uh, for Max Quake, Stab, Max Airstream Fly, and then finally uh, Max Rockfall. Good against Charizard, good against flying types in general. Uh, and especially if you have the Life Orb, it, it hits like a truck. Now, Aleki, also very standard set here. You know, this is overall a very easy team to pilot, you know, uh, it, just for what it can do and what it's supposed to do. Electro Web, Thunderbolt, um, you know, you can go Volt Switch. Uh, but you know, you, you can also go eerie impulse. I, I think both uh, work out just fine. Y you know, it really all depends on what you want to do. But for the sake of the team, we'll go volt switch and then protect in the last slot here. But I do like eerie impulse on Aleki sometimes. But I think with all the snarls on the team, I think we're fine. But yeah, um, so now let's just take a look at the EVs here. So we got all the moves and items, I believe. Yeah, we do. Okay, so now let's take a look at Eveltal here. So um, there's a couple of speed tiers that you can focus on with the Veltal. Um, but I like to go modest here. And now with the speed tier, uh, you have a few options. You can uh, opt to be faster than Calyrex Shadow. You can opt to be faster than uh, Kyogre. Or you can opt to be faster than Zacian after plus one. I think these are all like very notable speed tiers. Uh, so, you know, and it really all depends on what you want to do. But if you want 140... 148 this will help you be faster than Zacian after a plus one because uh, Let's do a, a calculator real quick. What is 140? Oh, it's lagging a second. Hold on. There we go 148 times 1.5 uh, That'll get you to 222. Yep, that'll make you faster than Zacian, but uh, if you go to 149 now you're faster than uh, Calyrex Shadow after plus one then you don't have to rely on a sucker punch you could just click uh, Snarl or even Foul Play and then you should be fine there. But, you know, other things are aiming to be faster or they're going for this speed tier for, you know, the Calyrex Shadow matchup. So you might as well just go faster than them. And then at that point, you might as well just add one more point in your speed. So this way that you're faster than um, them as well. So 151, okay, is our our speed for Eveltal this time. All right. Uh, and then from here, honestly, Again, we're not trying to deal damage here. We're, we're, we're just aiming to be bulky uh, and be annoying while dealing a little bit of damage. So we're just going to go first EV bump here uh, with 68 investment. So 174 to 176. So again, this is the first EV bump uh, for Eveltal in the special attack nature. Uh, and again, I always ask this every team building video. If you don't know what an EV bump is, you know, comment in the video description and I'll tell you what an EV bump is. But I get this question at least once per video. Um, which means people are not watching the other videos, <laughs> but, but that's okay. Uh, my job is to explain no matter how many times people ask me. Okay, so first EV bump here, 68 investment. And then from here with the HP mark, um, you know, you just want to optimize against hail chip and sand damage. Uh, I believe 207 can do that. All right, but again, this is this is a little bit low for Evolatol. Uh We have a, a very bulky HP stat, so I think we can go to the next... Uh, the next threshold for that and I believe that's going to be at 223 investment if I'm not mistaken uh, Yeah, I believe this is it. So if we do 223 divided by 16 All right, that's going to give us 13.9 which rounds down to 13 Damage per turn. So this is optimizing our HP against the weather damage uh, Where we mitigate mitigate that as much as possible because if we go to 224 uh, now, now it's a perfect 14 damage per turn. Why are we taking an extra HP of damage when we don't need to? So let's just undercut the threshold and go to 223. And then from here, just one point in defense and then, you know, the rest in special defense. Again, you want that even number just so that you get the most bang for your buck 
uh, with the assault vest because again you get a 1.5 multiplier boost so it's good to have an even number there <clears throat> and yeah that's our eveltal spread all right metagross same idea same thought process that we're going to be using uh, that we've always done with our metagross again 112 is a good speed tier uh, just so that you know after a plus one airstream you're faster than base 100s and then after two airstreams or even a tailwind you're faster than Calyrex shadow uh, but we don't have tailwind we have airstream so but either way uh, adamant is what we're going with and we'll go again second bump on our metagross here all right and then from here honestly we can just go one point above it uh, this is just so that uh, we outspeed those speed creepers, right? So 113 is one point faster than 112. So now we're faster than those speed creepers. But yeah, uh, again, this is the second bump in our attack natured stat. Uh, you see how we go from 185, and then if we slide it over one, we go to 187. So you see how we skipped 186. Again, that is another EV bump. Okay. So that's our Metago spread. Spectre, we are focused as, so we don't have to think too hard about this one. We just want to go timid. Uh, so this way at least we can speed tie other spectres although it is not so common in the format and then just go 252 252 um now with this uh, you can make this a little bit bulky if you want to um but because we have a sash uh, i don't think we need to i think if you go safety goggles here then you can do a different ev spread uh but because we are sash it's just fine to go 252 252 all right instant uh same instant spread that we're always going to use so i always like a faster instant uh, just so that I can get that faster fake out. All right. And then if there is trick room, then our parting shot goes last uh, because we are the faster incinerar, right? So I always like to go 95 speed uh, just so that, you know, specifically, you know, for Lapras, uh, most Laprases are kind of slow. They, they're not too fast. And, you know, I would love to be able to parting shot that thing before it gets off a of max geyser. So, you know, this way it can waste its max. So 95 speed in Cinderella is pretty good for me. Uh, first EV bump on the careful nature, it's going to be 76. And then from here, um, we just go also 76 and the rest in HP. So th this is uh, this will also help you survive a close combat from a Zacian after you bring it to neutral with an Intimidate. All right, so that's the purpose of this spread. Landris, so, you know, another standard set that we can go with our life orb landers here again we're gonna go jolly and we'll just go up to uh what is it 196 i believe yeah this will help us outspeed um calyrex shadow after a plus one airstream and then from here we just optimize our hp you know again we want a little bit uh just so that we end in a nine so this way 169 divided by 10 is 16.9 which rounds down to 16 again why are we dividing by 10 because you take one tenth uh of your hp damage per turn from your life orb so you want to optimize that because if you go to 170 now you're taking 17 damage per turn again why are we taking extra hp damage when we don't need to so undercut the threshold by ending with a nine when you have a life orb and uh, now you have a little bit of added bulk that you know teams don't calc for so there's that and from here you just want to max out your attack stat and then uh just you know just dump the rest into your spadef and last point in defense and then this is an optimized landerous life orb that's faster than caloric shadow after a plus one airstream all right reggie lecky uh kind of the same idea as spectre i mean all we really need out of it is just you know just a standard set uh standard spread here just just do 252 252 and you know it's it's okay we're, if this was a tailwind team i would go modest electing i would go bulky where i can live a grassy glide and live a wicked blow urshifu but there is no tailwind on this team so we'll just go 252 252 it's perfectly fine all right so now let's just uh take a look at how the pace looks right off the bat okay uh there it is so now the main thing here is uh, I did change the taunt and I'll show you why I changed it when I, we look at some sample battles But again, we got double intimidate. We got fake out pressure. We have a little bit of speed control with bulldoze and electro web uh, We have some strong dynamax options in metagross. We have an air streamer in landris and also Yveltal. and you know 
Uh, Veltel, again, is just that one restricted that just relies on good board positioning and can stay on the board and just absorb health over time. And while being annoying with snarl, sucker punches, and you know, that kind of thing. We're not meant to deal big damage in one go. That's not how you want to play with the Veltel. The, the, the way you play it is by good board positioning and being able to hit the right mons at the right time and tanking hits uh, with your assault vest, all right? And speaking of the assault vest, it helps out with a lot of defensive calcs, which we will now show you before we get into some of the sample battles. So let's take a look at some calcs. Okay, so the first main calc that I want to look at is something like a Kyogre. You know, normally Velta with the assault vest, we would look at something like a Xerneas, but there is no Xerneas in Series 11 <laughs> or even Series 8. That was more of a Series 10 threat. Uh, so the next best threat is something like a Kyogre. And look at this water spout damage. This is a modest max Kyogre in the rain with Mystic Water. And, you know, it, the Evelto takes it very, very well. And then just go for something like an Oblivion Wing where we can just recover it. Uh, and make water spout deal even less damage is always nice but what's also cool about this is let's say the Kyogre maxes here and you know goes for a max geyser in the rain you still live this all right <laughs> you still live this max geyser with a little bit of health you know you can get uh, a potential snarl off a uh, potential oblivion wing uh, but the point is that you can get one attack off and live this uh, max geyser and then have something in the back uh, to finish the game like maybe you're a lucky uh, as an example or maybe even your metagross but you will live uh, the Kyogre Max Geyser as well as uh, the water spot very very comfortably so that's the first main cop that you know I'm looking at the next one is obviously something like a Reggie Alecky. Uh so if we go to a standard Alecky set here so again uh, a Thunderbolt uh, from Alecky also does not kill Eveltal and you know we could just uh, either sucker punch it or oblivion wing it or snarl it you know as a sucker punch does so much damage to this thing by the way so you know and if this were to max uh you know of course yeah, that that would obviously kill but uh if we max as well then we're fine we, this doesn't do more than 60 percent damage which is pretty good if you ask me now if this was a life orb a lucky i think it has a chance to kill uh without max uh actually no it doesn't so Life Orb, Thunderbolt, um, that's not max, does not, still doesn't kill Eveltal, and then we're, we're still chilling there. So, cool that we can live uh, Reggie Lucky Calcs, right? Now, let's take a look at something like a Lapras, um, because, you know, Resonance is a thing. Uh, let's just go Custom Set here. Uh, I'll just go a 252 Life Orb Lapras here, uh, just erase some of this stuff. <clears throat> I don't know who's running 252, 252 Lapras, but there's some people out there that just think 252 modest is the way to go for lapras but uh, for those people bless their soul but anyway um max max guys uh max res hey, look at this thing max resonance uh it doesn't come anywhere close i mean it comes a little bit close uh, if it's a max roll but again we're still chilling uh we can live the resonance and then get off a potential snarl and make the lapras useless um so you know there's something like that that the Evelto can live um, but what about like some physical stuff like Zacian or Landris? Uh, let's take a look at that. Now, if it's play rub Zacian, then, you know, you're going to have to rely on Intimidate here. Um, but either way, you know, you're, you're still kind of chilling. All right. So Behemoth Blade doesn't kill. Look how much Foul Play does. Foul Play uh, for a standard uh, Zacian that's not Intimidated or anything can do at least 50%. So what you should be aiming for is, you know, use something like a Regieleki. Uh, or chip the Zacian to at least half. So this way your foul play can finish the job against Zacian from here. You know, um, if we do in fact intimidate it, then the foul play does about 35 to 41%, which is still not too bad. All right. And uh, again, we can live the play rough uh, if it is intimidated. Uh, about an 18% chance to KO, but I'll take my chances. That's good enough. Uh, the lander should be the landers and the instant should be able to handle the Zacian, but you know if if it comes to a point where I gotta live one attack and the Zacian's chipped and foul play can pick up from there, then that's what I want, right? So there's there's that. What about landers? Uh, a, a non-life orb rockfall. I think we can live that. So standard Lando. Um, 
Let's go Max Rockfall. Yeah, see, like, with a Veltal, not even Max. Max Rockfall doesn't even kill it, and then we can regenerate some of it back uh, with Oblivion Wing or, you know, get, you know, another potential foul playoff. But, yeah, I, again, we can live the Rockfall. What about something like Zard? Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know about Zard, but, you know, we if we can live it, that would be amazing. Uh, let's go a standard set here. All right. Uh, in the Sun, 252... Let's say timid, uh, solar power, and what about like life orb? Okay, all right. So let's say hurricane. Where's where's it? Yeah, here we go. Hurricane or air slash even blast burn, blast burn, and then the the ground move doesn't matter, but. Yeah, I'll just put it anyway. The ground move doesn't matter. Um, so in the sun, yeah. See, <laughs> wildfire actually just picks up. So we can't live that. But I'll tell you what. Now let's max, and now we can live it. And look how much our things are doing to Charizard. So you know, as long as we max the Eveltal, we can live the Zard hit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but again, we have a Landorus for the Zard, and we have Parting Shot on Instant. So. And also we have a Reggie Lucky. So Zard is not a concern, but if we have to take in a, a max move, we can uh, because we have the Assault Vest, as long as we max ourselves, right? So that's always uh, good to consider. Now, let's just show finally the Calyrex Shadow. <laughs> I don't even know if we even need to show it, but yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and show it. So <laughs> that's too much damage. All right, so even without max, look at all of all of our attacks just one shot it. You know, even Snarl can just one shot this thing when it's not max. Uh, if it is max, uh, Sucker Punch almost kills it from here, <laughs> and that's funny. That, it's actually funny because you know if it does get off a Phantasm and if it has a Life Orb, it's gonna take some chip, and then that's enough for Sucker Punch range, right? Pretty much unless we low roll it so and then if we max it it's just you know without a doubt it just dies so you know th those are some key calcs to keep in mind uh with calyrex uh, i don't think we need to do venusaur venusaur is a grass type it it, it doesn't it doesn't pick up from there uh we showed a lucky we showed lapras um is there anything else uh we showed zard um i guess we can do okay let's let's take a look at something like a rotom uh, Ro because there's Rotom on Zacian teams, right? So I think that's worth looking at. Rotom Heat. All right. Um, yeah, this is a normal set. So like Rotom, Max Lightning uh, with our AV. Again, we can take that. Um, let's Dynamax as well. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that does nothing. Let's say this was Nasty Plot uh, plus two Rotom. I mean, 66% is pretty good. But again, um, we're, we should we should live things just fine. What about if both of these weren't max? Again, this is just like a, a, a common Rotom spread, 116 EV bump. Uh, Thunderbolt doesn't kill, uh, and then we could potentially get a Snarl off or you know foul play Sucker Punch, that kind of thing. But we can live one Thunderbolt uh, if we need to. So kudos to the Assault Vest. But yeah, those are some calcs uh, to consider. Um, and the rest of the team, I we don't really. I think I've said it before, like the instant can live the close combat from Zacian and then the rest is just whatever because Reggie Lecky and Spectre are 252, 252 anyway. So let's just go straight into some of these sample battles and see how the team performs. All right, so first thing I'm looking at is Dialga. And then he's got a pretty cool Dialga team. There is a Talon Flame on this team for some reason. I feel like you can just put Ince in there, but perhaps, you know, he wants the Tailwind and Talon Flame does well against Zacian. It walls two of its moves and then you get that speed control with tailwind so um it has some merit um now let's just i, I feel like you know our own landris does very well against this uh and then evelton can just come in the back and finish things off but um you know even metagross here with spectre looks pretty good so here's what i'm gonna lead he's gonna go with grim snarl and oh wow it's like grim snarl talent flame and then i go with spectre and metagross so Basically, the idea here is, you know, he's going to Tailwind, right? So I'm just going to mat. I'm just going to proc my policy and just go into the Grim Snow here. I, th again, there's no reason for me to max this turn. I don't need to max my Metagross to kill this Grim Snarl. Um, I'd rather save it because, you know, he's going to get the Tailwind and then he's going to get the free switch. And, you know, Dialga probably comes in. So I want to save my max for that. 
you know, and then just play like the All My Friends Are Dead game, kill every one of Dialga's partners, and then hopefully in the end, Evelto can finish it off when Metagross is done. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to max here, so I'm just going to, he's just going to get his screens up. He, uh, he got light screen up for some reason. You know, I, I don't understand if he knows Metagross is a physical attacker, but he actually goes for Will-O-Wisp and then the Iron Head. So that's probably why he did it, right? Because... This Talonflame, for some reason, is running Will-O-Wisp, and then he burned my Metagross, but it still killed his Grimmsnarl. So, uh, yeah, he burned me, so I'm not going to max Metagross. So, th there's the Dialga, right? So, he probably maxes this thing, um, but again, I just have to, you know, get rid of this Talonflame. So, this is one of those scenarios where, like, I wish I had Snarl on my Spectre, right? Because then I can neuterize this Dialga, but I don't. So, all I can really do is try and taunt the Talonflame, just so that he doesn't... You know, maybe potentially not get his Tailwind up, but I know he has Gale Wings. Uh, so there's the Tailwind, so my Taunt doesn't matter. And he kills my Metagross. I mean, again, that's fine. Um, because, you know, I just have to, you know, survive against this Max Dialga. So I get instant in. Uh, and again, I can just Parting Shot. He can Max Quake again, but I can switch into Eveltal and bait it. So uh, I have to try and bait the Max Quake. I know he, he has a Max Quake. It's a Dialga. What Dialga doesn't have Max Quake? So I'm going to bait that into Eveltal. Let's see if I can get this read right here. He actually goes for the Hurricane. That's fine. That doesn't do anything. So I do bait the Max Quake. Um, you know, why wouldn't he go for it? Why would he go for the Spectre? It's not threatening him. And again, I could have got a Snarl off, but, you know, I, I don't have it. So all I can do is just chip the Talonflame. So this way, you know, I could put it in range later. But he's, he still has one Spideff boost, so that's why it didn't do as much as I thought it would. Uh, but from here, he goes into Landris. Again, that's fine. Um, I go into Instin, so this is actually a pretty good swap because I intimidate his Lando. Uh, and he goes for Hailstorm, so I do live one you know, special attacking move, you know, because he has one turn of max left. So now my idea is to just try and get faster than this Dialga here, um, just in case he might be max speed or whatever. But there's the chip on the landers, that's all I need. So I go for the fake on Indiaga just in case he wants to go for something like a, a trick room, you know, in case he has it, you know, just to prepare next turn. But we remove the landers, which is all I want. Uh, and now he has uh, his Talonflame coming back in. He could go for uh, Tailwind, but uh, now my Evelta should outspeed it, and I should be able to take it out um, with this Airstream. But it actually lives because it's a bulky Talonflame. Um, he burns my Evelta, but that doesn't matter. But I am lucky to get the parting shot off onto Dialga here. And he goes for his own Blizzard. So he actually has Blizzard instead of Ice Beam. And he's chipping away at his own Talonflame, which is honestly fine. But my Evelta is plus two, so I'm the faster thing here. Okay, so the Talonflame actually has Protect, which is interesting. I just want to chip the Dialga a little bit just to survive. Um, I thought I can get the special attack boost on the Spectre, but... To no avail. The Blizzard, again, does not kill Eveltal because we have the Assault Vest. And again, that very little chip that we had um, that we got from the Oblivion Wing allowed our Eveltal to live. I somehow missed the Snarl on the Dialga. I couldn't tell you how I missed it. Uh, but we did pick up the Talonflame at least. But now he picks up the Eveltal. But the Spectre does live. And I fortunately, I have Fake Out and Incineroar in the back. So... I can just chip the Dialga twice here with a Shadow Ball, all right, and I'm faster because I'm Spectre, and there it is. So, you know, lucky enough to pull out that one, but, you know, you know that the Ensign came in the clutch, <laughs> all right, but I'm surprised that I did miss the Snarl on the Evelto, but still, we played it well enough where we pulled it out in the end. Okay, so this is a, an Eternatus team, and there is a... Drift Blim, <laughs> so that thing has like probably unburdened Tailwinds shenanigans, but again, this is another one of those games where it looks like Metagross can deal a lot of damage, and especially if I have Max Hailstorm, uh, because th there's three things, the four things weak to ice, actually. So I don't know what this guy was thinking when he was building this team, but, you know, Max Hailstorm looks really good. So Spectre Metagross is the play yet again, and there's his Landorus, there's the Grim Snarl. Uh, again, I don't think I need to max the Metagross here. Uh, because, you know, this Grimson is going to go for screens, and this Landorus, uh, he might even max this. Uh, but again, Ice Punch can just finish finish it off. Um, and I don't know if he maxes the Lando here. Uh, so he just goes for a Reflect. Alright, he doesn't max the Lando. And I'm going for Ice Punch here. But he goes for Rock Slide instead. 
Okay. And there's the Ice Punch. And he's actually Sash Landris. How? Why? I don't even know why he's putting a Focus Sash on this thing. Uh, that's news to me. I don't know what he's thinking there. Uh, but I guess now's the time to max the Metagross. He protects the Landris. That doesn't matter. Um, I don't know if he understands how clear body works, but... Yeah, again, there's the Steel Spike and there's the Babiri. So, Babiri Berry Reflect doesn't stop uh, me from killing the Grimmsnarl. So, this is why, you know, I always say, just go like Clay. These berries on Grimmsnarl make no sense. You know, you, you still die. You, you, you put it for a Steel move, you still die. So, what is the point of the berry? <laughs> okay, now from here, uh, so there's no Flying type for him, right? I mean, I know he could probably potentially pivot into Drift Limb. I don't think he does that. I think this is just a free kill for Metagross in the end after a Spectre. Uh, but, you know, again, I didn't go for the Bulldoze play. He goes for Flamethrower, which is kind of cute. And he's Life Orb, so that just means he dies. So goodbye. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I was surprised to see that. You know, I, I thought he would max the Landris in the first turn, but I guess he didn't want to max it. Um, but yeah, another game where, you know, Metagross just does its thing and Spectre was a big help. Okay, this is kind of cool. So he also has a Zacian Dragonite team, but he's got Tyranitar and Gyarados. Uh, I understand the Rotom and the Grimmsnarl. Another team with a, a Grimmsnarl, so I feel like I'm the best one that knows how to use this thing. Um, but again, you know, Spectre Metagross looks really good again, and there's the Rotom and there's the Grimmsnarl. So, you know, he goes for Thunder Wave, he misses, thankfully. There's the Bulldoze, we proc it. Again, I don't need to max here. Uh, I just need to get rid of the Grimmsnarl, and get rid of the Grimmsnarl I shall, so no screens for you. Goes for Overheat and misses. I mean, he could have connected on that, but I got Landers in the back. So, there's the Zacian, we knew that was coming. Um, he maxes the Rotom anyway. Uh, he protects, I protect, I thought he would probably like go for an Overheat on my Metagross, or Max Flare, which is actually what he goes for. So this is another one of those games where like, I wish I had Snarl, because then I can just punish this Max. Um, so there's the, the alright, there's the Substitute. Again, I'm just trying to break the sub here, um, just to get rid of it. And there's my Stomping Tantrum, I break the sub, uh, and my Metagross just dies. So, but the thing is, I broke two turns of, of his Max, right? So here's my Landris, I Intimidate the Zacian, he's neutral, I know I can take one attack. All right, he Behemoth Blades, that's fine. Uh, I do get the Will-O-Wisp, but my goal is to remove the Rotom here and change the weather so he doesn't have max flare damage. All right, but I think he goes for it anyway and he still kills me. So I could have actually just protected there uh, or even like max guarded and then just burned the Zacian, but, and then max this thing instead. So not quite as optimal. There's a Dragonite in the back. Um, the Behemoth Blade does nothing. Um, I taunt the Zacian just so that he can't get up his sub or try and protect. Um, and now I do get off the Snarl, but he switched out the Rotom already. Snarl does so much. And then now I just chip everything. Um, so there's a Behemoth Blade again. That does nothing to Spectre. I burn the Dragonite just in case. And there's my Oblivion Wing. So now Eveltal just does what Eveltal does and just just sits there and, and, and is annoying. And now both of these mons can't do anything to Eveltal. So again, there's a Behemoth Blade. Again, it does nothing. I'm just sitting here. I'm being bulky. I'm playing the way Veltal's supposed to be played. All right. I do a foul play. Uh, you know, I did Intimidate, so it doesn't pick up the kill. But, you know, this game is done. I can ignore the Zacian here and just target the Rotom. Even if he protects the Rotom um, and attacks with the Zacian, he can only kill one of me. And then whatever I have left just wins the game because I know this is a slow Rotom and he just gives up anyway. So, yeah. Uh, again... I could have max guarded the Landris just because it was the last turn for the Rotom max, but you know, I was still in a okay spot because I had Eveltal in the back. But yeah, uh, now let's look at the Poke Pace one last time and show the change that I made to Spectre. Okay, so originally, again, I had Taunt on the Spectre, um, you know, just for like trick to deny Trick Room or Tailwind potentially especially in later in the end games, but eventually I just switched it to Snarl. Snarl with the Veltal is actually really, really good. And if you have like double Snarl pressure, uh, it just does so much damage. And, you know, I think it's worth it. I, I think I think you can live without the Taunt or you can even put Taunt on Instant if you want. But uh, I think uh, Throat Chop is really, really good uh, on an Eveltal team because you get that Dark Aura bonus. But yeah, this is what we got. I think it's solid for what the team can do. Um, it's a fun way to try to use Eveltal that doesn't involve a Suncore. 
Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. And this will be the fifth and final rental that we'll release for January when the first of the month hits. So uh, until then, have a good one.